Hi, welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Friday the 25th of February, I believe. Today I'd like to, to talk to you about a, a phrase that I think about quite often. I love words and it really throws me for a loop sometimes. It, the phrase is, in the meantime. In the meantime. Sometimes it feels like that word, that phrase is like, a throwaway thing like well in the meantime I'll you know make my grocery list or in the meantime it sounds like we're 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 just marking time during things the actual definition of it is meanwhile or the intervening period of time so it doesn't essentially mean wasted time or filling in time you know marking your marking time it is the intervening period of time so some the time between things which has got me thinking a lot lately because the last couple a couple of days I've been reading this book called The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and um, I belong to the Military Family Resource Center in Wainwright to the book club and because of COVID we don't often actually get to meet to talk about the books but we get to read some pretty good books. It's looking like I'll be able to, 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 to join with them to talk about this book. But this book is about just a quick synopsis. is about a young woman who's not going through her life isn't quite what she would hope it would be, and she's pretty pretty depressed, and she decides she's going to take her life. And after she has committed the act of suicide, she finds herself in what is called the Midnight Library. And it's this sort of ethereal kind of library with books and books and books that sort of the shelves move around and they float and things like that. And there's one person there, who, one figure there, Mrs. Elm, who was a librarian she knew at a formative time of her life. Nora is the character, Nora Seed. And the librarian helps her to pick out books. And the first book she looks at is her book of regrets. All those things in her life that she did um, or didn't do that she regrets. And you see, she's in a period of time, like because she's sort of between death, um, life and death. She's, she doesn't know what's happening. And this is, certainly isn't a Christian book, but this idea that, that she's in this place where in between life and death in that sort of split most split second she she gets to check check out other lives lives she could have had had she made different decisions and sort of this idea that there are many universes and an infinite number of universes in which she made infinite number of different decisions which created different lives and it's a cool idea and it's a really great read but that's not what I want to talk about what I want to talk about is this sense of in the meantime, because although I don't think the word, that phrase has been used in this book, it's making me think about that. It's making me think about Nora as she chooses which life to check out, which book she's going to see how her life went. She's trying to decide which life she really, really wanted. I'm not quite done. I have about 70 pages left, and I'm, I'm kind of hoping that in the end she somehow chooses the life she had and goes back to before she takes all those pills and somehow figures out what to do. Um, that's what I'm cheering for. We'll, we'll see what happens. But the point is that, that she's going back and she's looking at all of these different possibilities, which made me think about all of the different possibilities that come with our mean times in the meantime. So like when you're sitting in at a red light or you're sitting at the doctor's office and you're waiting for your appointment and it's always taking forever and they're always running late. And we do that whole, you know, think about, look at your watch and think about, well, what next and what I got to do? And do I have to make a phone call to cancel something else because this is taking so long? And we, you know, we get so preoccupied with all of those things about tomorrow and in 10 minutes and what we did yesterday or what we did five minutes ago. And we take all of the meantime, the the intervening period of time between, you know, action A and action B, or timeline A and timeline B, and we fill it up with all of these things. And I don't think we pay enough attention to that intervening period of time. What is happening, because the fact is that even though it feels like it's just an intervening period of time, it is a period of time. <laughs> it is a period of time in which we can pray or we could read a book we could make a phone call. We could listen to the sounds around us. We could look at the sights around us. There is so much that is actually happening in the meantime, in that intervening period of time that we don't pay attention to. And, and not just for little things like when you're sitting in a doctor's office or at a red light or 
you know, waiting for a phone call, things like that. But even those bigger things in life, I mean, I spent, some of you know that I didn't marry Rob until I was 34 years old. Yeah, I was 34. Um, and I didn't even date till I was 32. And I spent sort of that time from when you're 15 and it looks like everybody in school is dating. They probably weren't, but it just feels like it. Um, through, you know, the rest of high school, you know, didn't go to my gra my graduation party, um, like the, you know, the formal, the dance and everything because I had no one to go with. Um, and I didn't want to go. I didn't have a lot of close friends and the people I did know all had dates. So I was like, you know, didn't want to be a fifth will. Um, and then all the way through university, both my degrees didn't date anyone. Um, and it was, it felt pretty lonely at the time. I really spent a lot of time bemoaning the fact that, you know, why has God done this to me? Why have, why don't I have the things that other people have? Why can't I have a quote unquote normal life? Why can't I experience those things that other people are experiencing? And in that time, I, I dreamed, I dreamed of a future. I discerned, I I did things. I, I, you know, I was in that time I graduated from university, was ordained and went off on, went into my own parish. And one year I went to, on my holidays, I went to Ottawa by myself. I got in my car. I made hotel arrangements. I bought myself a ticket, an excellent ticket, like 13, 14, 15 rows up from the ice to see the Ottawa Senators play the, um, the Pittsburgh Penguins. It was the first game back for Mario Lemieux in the um, Corral Center at the time in Ottawa and I could hear him like it was so close to the ice I could hear him talking to other players during the warm-up it was incredible I walked the parliament I walked from the hotel up to the parliament buildings and saw the cat houses behind <laughs> behind the parliament buildings I got to go inside the parliament buildings and watch the protesters on on the hill I, it was beautiful and during all that time, I kept thinking, well, you know, this would be so much better if I had someone else. But in retrospect, in retrospect, I realized that that was a huge meantime, the intervening period of time in my life between, you know, this part of growing up and, and this part of growing up, you know, meeting Rob and getting married and my life completely changing and, and moving from diocese to diocese as we move. But but looking back on my life, I, with perspective, I can see that God filled up all those mean times. There's, there was never a wasted moment. Things that I learned, the things, that, the ability to be pastoral and, and understanding to a single person, um, especially a single woman who is not, you know, is not a very young person, but is living their life as a single person, I, I can understand that to a degree because I lived it and I know what it's like to be lonely and I know what it's like to, to want to have a family. I know what it's like to have children, want to want to have children and not have them. These are all things that I've learned and experienced and I can appreciate and share with others that I wouldn't have had if God had filled up my mean times with the very things I was asking for. You see, I think that in the grand scheme of things, the meantimes, in the meantime, is God's way of saying, I'm going to share some wisdom with you. I'm going to share some experiences with you that you alone are going to have because you wouldn't have had them if you'd been filled up with things in your life from this period or from this period. This meantime time, this intervening period of time is a time of great learning and great wisdom and great discernment and great opportunity. And, and essentially, it's a really great moment to be alone with God. Because I think in our, our meantimes are quiet times for us. They may not be quiet, but they're times when it's you and God alone in the meantime. Because you're not doing something. You're not actively doing something with someone else at that time. It's just you and God. So what I know that when I look back on my past 50 years, at least, well, at least probably 40 of them, I can say, you know, I can see incredible things that God has done in and through my mean times. What about you? What are those moments in your life, those experiences that you never would have had if you had been so busy doing those things that you planned to do or that you would have done or you wanted to do? 
What are those things that you can look back on now and say, it, I wouldn't have given thanks for it then, but I wouldn't give it up now. What were your mean times? What were the gifts that God gave you in your intervening periods of time? Sometimes I think those mean times are the greatest times of all. Have a great weekend. I hope you find some in the meantime time for you and God just to be this weekend. I will see you on Sunday for for our mini worship for the Feast of the Transfiguration and following God's call down the mountain with Jesus after we have been transfigured with him into whatever it is that God is calling us to do next. And I will see you on Monday for Church at Home with Rachel. God bless you. God bless you and keep you.